Okay, what's going on guys? This is the kill switch number 18, I believe. We're about to get into it because this has been a very interesting and frustrating day. But before we get into all that, let's have a word from my sponsor. This video, Cool Cats and Cool Girls, is sponsored by Hustlers University, where we teach you how to hustle. We teach you how to start your first side business business where we teach you how to start a business that will make you $1,500 to $5,000 on top of your job in the next three to five months. So this is what I got for you. You will go here to H undergrad. All links are below and you can do a thousand dollars to get in one time payment, or you can do 30 payments of $50, or you can do 15 payments of $99 because what this curriculum will do is teach you how to hustle. It will teach you how to do resale. It will teach you so many things because what is cool about this is it's just not a course. It is, we, we provide you with a pathway. And what is that? And the first comment is the schematic of the things that you have to do. And right now, there's literally five months of training and instruction in Hustlers University to get you started. So once you start diving in, you're going to be working for the next five months and you're going to do some of the courses concurrently and you're going to build your first side business. So go ahead, act on this opportunity. The price isn't going to change so you can get in, get your money together so you can start to level up. Once again, the link is below in the first comment, and hopefully you will be part of the Hustlers Kung Fu family. Also, coming soon, everyone that signs up for Hustlers Kung Fu and essentially what we have here is B-School for Hustlers is the grad school. This is like getting your MBA. This is like the MBA, the corporate papers. And if you go ahead and sign up for Hustlers Kung Fu and you want the corporate papers, whatever you pay for Hustlers Kung Fu University, we will take that off so and give you a discount code so you can get into the corporate papers when you're ready. I know many of you don't really care how you make money, and I understand that now. So I'm going to teach you how to do resale. I'm going to teach you how to do Craigslist. I'm going to teach you how to do service businesses and all of this stuff. Once again, that first link under the video is where you can access all of this juicy training. So let's go ahead and get into this video. This is what's going on. I've had not one, not two, not three, but four kill switches fail. Now, what does that mean? That means that when you turn the car off, it doesn't turn the car off. And it's been somewhat of a nightmare because I was feeling somewhat confident and secure because I had my kill switches installed. But here's the first story. The girl had the black 335D and she wasn't paying. So I turned the car off. And then the next day, um, because I would, you know, I turn the car off and I wait for them to call me because that's where I can do. Oh, my goodness. It's something wrong with it. Just leave the key in it and, you know, get the car back. Right. She never called. And then I went to my GPS system and saw that the car was in Stockbridge. And I was like, wait a minute. And she kept moving and kept moving and kept moving and kept moving. And I was just sitting there like, what the hell? So we had that situation and I was able to get the car from her. Let me go ahead and tell you guys something. There is a flaw in the hire car system. This girl had was late with another owner and she should have never been able to rent from me. But see, here's the thing that I just found out recently. When someone rents your car and doesn't pay you, you have to file a claim. If you do not file a claim, that person can come back on the platform and rent another car. And I've been doing this six months, right? And I already know that when people are habitually late, it doesn't change. They just get later and later and later. So 
that is a flaw in the hire car system because one of the things that I put because uh, I'm on auto approve and a lot of people will try to apply for my cars and they get instantly rejected because either they're new to the platform uh, they've never rented before or they're really young I'm not renting the young people anymore because I'm getting tired of my cars just being torn up but this chick she put 14,000 miles on that BMW when I got it, it had 130. And when I rented it to her, it had 130,000 miles. When I got it back, it had 144. She was driving her ass all over Georgia. And this is one of the things that's a big problem. When someone keeps your car and they're not paying you, they're driving it. They're driving it every day. They're wearing out the tires. They're wearing out the oil. They're wearing out the car. They're depreciating it. So I was able to finally get the car back from her because I threatened to call the police and the next day she brought it back. Yes, she put 14,000 miles on this car in one month, one month. So then the next kill switch the story I have is I turned off the, um, actually that worked, the BMW worked. Actually, I only had three failures, sorry, not four, three failures. Because four failures is almost 20% out of 25. But this is the developing story. I got this group of people, group. It's a couple and there's some other folks into it. Because uh, I, tr I tried to turn the car off and I saw that they were driving over Georgia. And I was like, man, here's another one that failed. And I only have one key to that car. So what, I knew where they were. So I just rolled up on them. I rolled up on them like Debo. I was like, I came to get my car back. And guess what they did? They actually paid. They actually paid. Now we're playing this cat and mouse game. Because, you know, remember when I first started this, there was like, you need to have the GPS kill switches. You need it. I'm right back where I started because the GPS kill switch doesn't work on that car. And I know it was installed properly. So I got to, once I get it back, I got to have that examined. But I got today, well, a few days ago, I sent the demand letter and I got to call the police to get my car back. Right back where I started, even though I have kill switches. And everyone's like, oh, you got to get those kill switches. I am right back where I started, even though I have kill switches. And I'm just sitting here like, oh, it's very frustrating. It's really frustrating because I can track the car. And I went to where the car was supposed to be and it's in a garage. So they've been playing this cat and mouse game and hopefully they get arrested because this is the only way I'm going to get my car back. And th this is one of the craziest things. And I'm beginning to understand some stuff. I'm beginning to, these are the nicest cars these people have ever been in and they don't want to give them back. I feel on some level, they think of it as their car. They, because, you know, one of the things I consistently see is people will put the car key on their house keys. And I tell them, don't do that. Just keep the key separate, you know, because they will take the nomenclature tag off and all this other stuff. But I'm beginning to think that these people feel that this is their car until something goes wrong with it. And at that point, it's now my car. But as long as it's fine and they can drive. And this is the 740i. This is one of the nicer cars in my fleet. And I am seriously worried that it's going to be destroyed because they're not paying me. And I'm just sitting here like, so tomorrow we call the police, file a police report. And typically when I follow police report, I get my car back in two days. And this is the only car that's out there that's been, you know, they've been ducking and dodging me. I should have filed, you know, with the move and everything. I was so pressed for time. I should have filed a demand letter about a week ago, but you know, it, it, we're here, but the kill switches are not infallible because you know, everyone's talking about kill switches, turn your car off. Like, you know, you might get two or three cars, have some kill switches and they work every time, but I have a fleet of 31 cars and I can tell you some stuff from having 31 cars that other people who have five or 10, they can't tell you. And 
it, it, it's just, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm just really, really frustrated right now. I'm really, really frustrated because they, you know, cause now I can't turn the car off cause I accused the guy of tampering with it. And once I get it back, I will have that checked out because uh, the people I bought my kill switches from, I'm going to ask them to send me another one because this one's defective. And I'm going to see if they will cover the, um, the cost of installation because this has been a nightmare, man. I'm just like, these folks are playing, you know, they were living in a hotel. And this is one of the things that, that gets me. And I don't understand it from um, a financial level. If I was in a hotel, if I was living in a hotel with my family, the last thing I would do is rent a BMW. I would be in a Corolla or something like that. I would not be in a BMW. So I sent the demand letter. I already know that it won't be delivered because they don't live there anymore. And it's just super, super frustrating. So if you're thinking about getting the car rental business and you think these kill switches are going to be, they're, they're going to save your, they, they fail. Sometimes they fail and then you're back to, you got to send the demand letter, then you got to wait and then you got to go to the impound to get your car. Once the police pick it up, that's going to be 140 to $180, man. It, it's just frustrating. It's just really, really frustrating because, um, one of the things I'm doing is I am not buying any more cars to 2022 because I got some stuff I need to figure out. Uh, I got one, two, three cars in the shop. Three. Well, actually four. I get the Mercedes back tomorrow. So I got three cars in the shop. I've got three cars wrecked. And th this is something else too. Shout out to USAA. I got a car that USA someone that had USA insurance hit my car. The car is going to be fixed tomorrow and I'm going to get a loss of revenue check. Shout out to USAA. It's a, it's, it's an amazing thing. So we're going to get like the car fixed and a check for about four, 30, about, I'm going to say 3,400 and that car only costs 15. So that's going to go really, that's going to be really, really nice. But, um, man, one of the things that I am coming to understand, uh, with people in psychology that a lot of people are really messed up. I could not imagine having someone's property, not paying them and just keeping it. And I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of people that will do it. A lot of people will do it, won't think twice about it, and they will depreciate your asset. So this is the last one. This is the last, they're, they're like 20 days behind. Like I said, I was moving, dating and doing all this other stuff. So I actually took my eye off the ball, but I should have sent that letter, like I said, last week. So this is the last long term, because one of the things is I've been really proactive. I got another car that I shut off and my assistant has COVID and I hadn't been able to, I'm going to try to get it tomorrow. I'm going to try to pick it up tomorrow. And then, uh, cause th this is what's funny. He's like, Hey, I was going to pay you. You know how many times I've heard that. And one of the things I'm doing, cause like th this is something else. I made a mistake. I turned the car off. Then I turned it back on. Guess what? I still didn't get paid. So that car, I shut it off. I'm not turning it back on. And I said, look, you can have one of your friends run you wherever you need to run and you can make that payment. You make that payment, that car comes back on. No payment, that car stays off. And that car hasn't been on. Cause here's the thing, man, people will lie. They will lie. I'm, I'm just sitting there like, like this, this, the people with the 740, it's like, Hey, uh, we can't pay you through, you know, a uh, higher car. That was a lie. Well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to cash app you the money. That was a lie. And they have a car that they can't afford, but they don't want to give it back. So I'll probably be getting that car back next week. Once the police get involved, because, um, uh, I've learned some tricks on that too. Cause, uh, I've sent my demand letter. 
I'm going to call the cops in the morning and get this thing rolling. And then um, we will see. We will see and get it in the system because that's the only way I'm getting my car back because they will not bring my car back. They will not bring my car back. I'm just sitting there like, what is up with these people? It's like, it's simple. You can't pay, bring the car back. And like, I was tracking them. They were driving all over the place. It's, you know, when I thought they had parked it and it's in the garage, I think that's by design because I don't know who they're staying with. I knocked on the door and the girl said, she doesn't live here. There's no one by that name here. And I'm like, okay, but I know my car is in your garage. I know that for a fact because the GPS nailed it because the, the GPS kill switches, it could, if it's an apartment complex, it can throw you a wrong address. Like the car would be here and they would give you an address over here. It'll be close, but it won't be exact. But if it's at a business or a house, it would give you an exact hit. And I knew my car was in that garage. And they're just sitting there like, I don't know what game they're playing. I don't know what game they're playing. So once I get the car back, I'm gonna close it out and I'm gonna make sure that they cannot do this to anyone else. Because like I said, there is a flaw in the higher car system. There's a big flaw and I think a lot of people are exploiting it and they're just going from owner to owner to owner getting, you know, because a lot of, you know, like no one ever told me that I had to file a claim and hire a car. If you're watching this, you need to get rid of that. If you have a renter who doesn't pay the owner, it should be an automatic lock their account up. We shouldn't have to file a report, but you know, because I have, you know how many people that have done this to me? And I didn't know I had to file a report. So in theory, these folks could be renting another car from someone else on hire car and do it. Cause once again, habits, man, habits, they do it to me. They're going to do it to another. And like this girl who put $14,000 on the BMW, 14,000 miles on the BMW. She did it to the guy before me. And she did the same exact thing. Cause once again, these people are economically fragile and they have bad financial habits. Now I have someone who rented the Porsche and he's paying three and four days at a time and he's working. So we will see. And today, um, I rented four cars today and tomorrow two more go out and I will have the Mercedes. I will have the Range Rover and I will have the X five and they may go out this weekend. Weekend seems to be pretty big. And then at that point, I won't have any more cars that I can rent. I've decided, oh, this is what happened to the Acura. When I got these Acuras, these Acuras were in mint condition. This white Acura, it's been hit on the front. And the last person, and I didn't even know he did this until after the rental, this rocker panel, that it, it fell off. He knocked it off some way. And I'm just sitting there like, okay. So I've decided to sell that. And what I'm getting ready to do is I have 31 cars and I'm getting ready to get rid of three or four of them because here's something else too. To me, when the first time I drove the Acura TL, I thought it was a good car. It's powerful, smooth, comfortable. It's a nice car. I don't know how many times I've had someone rent that Acura and like, hey, can I bring it back and get a BMW? That has happened like 10 times. And then I have a BMW 530i, I'm gonna sell that because it's the same thing. They want the 335i's, the 550's, the zippy zippy cars. I don't know how many, you know, at one point, it was a really frustrating week because I had people bringing cars back to trade out. So I still had the same amount of renters. And I was just sitting there like, what the hell? So I'm getting rid of all of these cars that when people rent them and they want to bring them back because they're not fast enough or they don't have enough panache or whatever, I'm getting rid of them. And I will build my fleet starting in 20, you know, like I, I'm sticking to this rule. I'm not buying any more cars in this year. You know, uh, if I get down to 25 cars, fine, I don't care. I'm not buying any more cars this year because I've got to learn how to get my, keep my utilization very high. Because if it wasn't for this yard bird, in the BMW, I would be at $22,000 for the month versus 19. I would be at 22. And we still got 
Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So this could have been like a $24,000 a month. And the good thing about this is I get to write this off my taxes. That's the only good thing because that's a, a net loss. So I've got tons of those and I've got it all documented and I got records. But man, these people. So like I said, you know, this is one of the reasons that I'm not buying any more cars. Like today, I had another situation. When you buy a car, they're supposed to do emissions and all this other stuff. I got this Range Rover that's going out tomorrow that I can't get a tag until I get emissions. And guess what? The check engine light popped on. So I'm going to rent it out. And then when I get it back, I'm going to go have the check engine light turned off and go run emissions and get me a tag. I'm just sitting here like it's been a frustrating day, just a frustrating day. I, I go to the office to get the cars ready and I see the Range Rover is on the flat and I'm like, Gah. so a new tire, $192 for a new tire. And I'm just sitting here like, and this is something else too. I've not had a flat tire 20, 22 years. I don't know what, now I got three cars I run. I got three cars. I don't know what they be running over, but tires are a big issue. And I'm getting ready to write up a policy and I'm going to start handing it out in November because I got to sit down and think about it. Like, you know, I got to think about the tone. It looks like, you know, thank you for renting my car. These are the rules. Number one, if you run across something, get that tire fixed. You have my permission to get that tire fixed because you caused damage. That tire was fine before you rented it and insurance and nothing covers tire. So that's going to fall on you. I got to convey that because every time the tire goes down, hey, man, it's got a flat. I'm like, fix it. You caused it like the guy with the Porsche. He was like, it's a bad tire. Get the car back. The tire got a hole in it in the front. It's got a hole in it. And I'm just sitting there like. Frustrating, man. It's just frustrating, frustrating. So, because, you know, I've done it. I can make 30,000 a month with 25 cars if I can get them all rented out. And this is something else, too. Um, I'm not going to buy any more cheap cars. No more cheap cars. No more hunt. No more Camrys. Because essentially what happens is because if people know what I have and they look in the app, they will rent that car and it's like, hey, can I come back and get a BMW? Can I come? I, I mean, consistently. And like there was one week where I had like 15 renters and then it never moved up because they would come back and get a BMW and then bring whatever they didn't like back. This happened. A guy rented a car. He rented a BMW that had issues and I had it in the shop. So I switched him to the Acura. This yard bird canceled. And then he came back and he rented out the Range Rover. Message acknowledge. They don't want these cheap cars, man. They don't want them. So next year, I'm going to start buying 2012 and up. I'm not going to, you know. And another thing, Uber has this policy where you can drop someone off whatever car you have. You could drop them off at the airport, but you cannot pick up anyone at the airport unless it's a 2014 or higher. And that's another little issue. So I'm going to get 2012, 13s and 14s. I'm going to push that $70 per day range because I got someone who's renting a car long term for 40 bucks a day and I've only made like $3,000. I make like at 70, I do like 1700 a month and there is a market for that. So what I'm getting ready to do, I'm just going to tighten up my policy and put my shopping and also my goal is to have my dealer's license before I start buying more cars. That's going to save me a ton of money. I don't have to pay sales tax. And what a friend of mine who's a dealer told me is if I go ahead and buy that car as a dealer, I don't have to pay sales tax once to get the tag. And that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So yeah, guys, these kill switches fail. I've had three of them fail on me and they fail in these cars. And th this is something else too. I'll get a car that will tear up on a good renter. 
but I will get a car that will not, no, it won't do nothing to a yard bird. This little chick, she 14,000 miles in a month. I don't know where she was going. I don't know where she was going. So that's another thing. So November, I feel it's going to be a really good month. This would have been probably a $24,000, $25,000 month if it wasn't for these yard birds. And I, I, I really, you know, violence is the antithesis of many things I hold dear. But I really would strangle these people. If I could get my hands around their neck, I would choke the shit out of them because they're depreciating my car. And this is another thing. And this is one of the reasons because uh, the guy who had the Range Rover, uh, he didn't pay. I had to call the police. He didn't pay. And he paid like four thousand and I had to do new tires. Then I had to do brakes. So he paid me four thousand, but I had to spend two thousand. So the, the, this is something you got to be really, really aware of. If you have someone who has your vehicle and they're not paying you, they're depreciating the shit out of it. So once again, I'm looking at getting a tax return of about 100 K this year. So that's the only silver lining in all of this, because uh, I feel I feel because one of the things I'm going to do when I start selling these cars, because I got to sit down because, you know, I, I, I operate from a written plan. I just don't start doing stuff. And I hadn't had the time to sit down and really analyze what cars I want to get rid of. But that Acura is gone. I'm selling that. Uh, I paid the Acura has made three thousand and I paid eleven. So if I could sell it for seven, I might have to sell it for six to move it quick. And I'm going to take that money and just apply it to the corporate credit card. I'm not buying any more cars. I'm not buying any more cars. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one. And man, frustrating week. Just a very, very frustrating week.